TV. We are here today with Dr. Michael Wald, Doctor of Nutrition and Director of Nutritional Services at Integrated Medicine of Mount Kisco, PC. Our topic today is benefits of juicing. What is the meaning of juicing and the reason reasoning behind it? Well, juicing basically means that you want to juice. You want to take fruits and or vegetables and turn them into a liquid that you can consume. The purpose of juicing is to extract the healthful elements in these plants, in the fruits and the vegetables, such as enzymes and the various phyto or plant elements that are anti-inflammatory and immune-promoting and are just really great for our health. And juicing generally involves the removal of the fiber content because you want to extract those healthful elements that are locked into the fruits and vegetables by the fiber. And you want to get your fiber by eating foods. So juicing allows you a very quick way to super concentrate the nutritional content of your diet. You know, most studies show that those individuals that consume between six and eight or even as many as ten pieces of fruits and vegetables per day have the lowest disease risks. They are propensity for developing heart disease and autoimmune disease, and degeneration in general is proportionate to the fruits and vegetables in their diet, meaning the higher intake, the lower your risk of disease. So the, the practice of establishing a habit of daily juicing, either once or even twice a day, uh, can go quite a long way in terms of health benefit. Now, I'm of the opinion that in addition to juicing, uh, organically when you can, uh, and using uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. I like to use dehydrated powders, which contain many dozens of fruits and vegetables in a sort of powdered nutritional mix, and I will add that to juicing. So I super concentrate the fruit or vegetable um, uh, drink many, many times over. Is juice testing suitable for everyone? If not, for whom is it most appropriate? Well, when we're talking about juice fasting, I guess we should distinguish between whether or not we're talking about juicing of fruits or juicing of vegetables. So if a person has special dietary needs, if they're allergic to certain foods or they know they have certain adverse reactions to foods, then they certainly wouldn't want to juice those foods. But assuming you've determined that the, the fruits or vegetables you're going to use are helpful, no, there are no side effects whatsoever. Some people might initially have some loose stool or digestive issues at the beginning of starting uh, implementing juicing in their daily routine, but those should quickly go away after a day or two or possibly three of your body sort of clearing itself out. But if those symptoms should persist, then you'd want to talk to your, to your nutritionally oriented healthcare provider to see if there's some, some issue with the particular combinations of fruits or vegetables that you're using. In general, juicing consists of either making uh, fruit smoothies uh, themselves alone and not combining them with uh, vegetables, and then having vegetable smoothies. Although, I will com commonly instruct my patients to make a vegetable smoothie, and uh, with, which might contain, let's say, celery or and kale and, uh, let's say, an apple and uh, beets. But I'll have that fruit in the form of an apple in there just to sweeten it up a little bit. So that combination is fine, but there are specific sort of rules in terms of what fruits you might want to mix with certain vegetables, but in general, you keep them separate. What foods go into a juice diet? Do they differ depending on the purpose of the diet? Yes, if someone's going to add uh, juice uh, into their diet or juicing, there are all manner of books out there and websites that describe certain uh, combinations of fruits and certain combinations of vegetables for different health issues. So, for example, you might read that uh, ulcers might, might be benefited from celery and cabbage. Uh, so the combinations are endless in terms of health problems, and, and that should be uh, determined by your health care provider and you. And sometimes a trial and error is sort of uh, needed where although uh, a book or the healthcare provider might say, well, this combination seems to be best suited for you, it may not be. So, uh, you know, this is all about taking some time to find out individually what you need. But among the dozens and dozens and dozens of different fruits and vegetable combinations that can be made, 
almost always some helpful combination can be managed that every single person can tolerate. I suppose the one exception uh, that, that is common is uh, a diabetic. Uh, a, a brittle diabetic or a diabetic that is uh, having a difficult time controlling his or her blood sugar might have issues with either food or a vegetable smoothies, particularly if the vegetable smoothies are too high in carrot juice. Uh, carrot juice is very high on what's known as the glycemic index. So I personally never instruct patients to add more than one-third of a glass of the juice being composed of the carrot juice. So in persons with blood sugar issues, that would need to be monitored a little bit more carefully. But on the other hand, the proper use of juicing could help uh, manage blood sugar problems, including diabetes. How long should a person be on a juice diet for? And are there any health risks for juicing for too long? Well, there's a difference between having juices as part of your regular diet and then being on a juice diet. Uh, I'm not a proponent of someone being on a liquid uh, diet of any type, whether it's juicing or not. Uh, I've seen too many adverse health uh, problems with that. So I would not recommend uh, juice diets, even for short-term use or, let's say, even weight loss. Uh, some of you might be thinking, well, why? If it helps me with weight loss, why wouldn't I want to use a juice diet? Well, you can't keep a juice diet up for long enough. And oftentimes people will go on juice diets and they're very, very strict and they will lose some weight. But once you stop eating or drinking, that is, the juices, uh, when you can't maintain that uh, way of eating any longer, the weight usually comes right back on and tends to cause even more adverse uh, weight gain over time. So when it comes to weight loss or, or juicing, you'd want to incorporate it into your food plan in a way that you know you can maintain over time because any amount of juicing done over time is beneficial, particularly compared to juicing once in a blue moon that's not on a regular basis. But I, I do not recommend juice fasts, for example. This has been Dr. Michael Wall.